Hi, this is Dr. Bernstein with another issue of Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes University. This time we're going to talk about foot care. Uh, it's a subject that's a lot more important than one might think. Uh, the amputation rate in diabetics uh, runs somewhere between t uh, around 10 percent. Uh, and the lifespan of a diabetic after an amputation of a foot or a leg is uh, about five years on average. So it adversely affects lifespan. Now, amputations don't have to happen. There are changes in the foot, in the shape of the foot, and in other aspects of the foot that we'll talk about due to high blood sugars. If you have normal blood sugars, you don't have to worry about these changes. So the first thing you do if you're worried about your feet is make sure you have normal blood sugars. If you have elevated blood sugars, even slightly elevated, a number of changes will occur. One change is peripheral sensory neuropathy, where sensation is impaired and you're less likely to feel injuries, burns, punctures, uh, etc. So you're more likely to get hurt if you can't feel anything. Another problem is what's called sympathetic neuropathy, where uh, th things that are stimulated by this sympathetic nervous system, like perspiration uh, ceases or gets diminished. Well, most long-term diabetics who I meet for the first time have extremely dry feet and uh, because they cannot sweat. And dry skin is more likely to get injured and m much slower to heal. So if you catch it early and have normal blood sugars from the onset of diabetes, you won't get dry skin. But if you do get dry skin, you should lubricate it. And what I recommend is lubricating with any animal or vegetable oil. And I've treated thousands of uh, patients in our wound care clinic, and I find olive oil to be extremely effective. So olive oil is fine. Uh, I don't like lotions. They don't get, seem to get absorbed as well as the uh, oils. So olive oil is fine. We don't want thick oils. I used to recommend mink oil, but it's too thick and sticky. It's harder to use. Olive oil is more, more fluid. Um, coconut oil might be okay also. That's lubrication. The most common, by, I, one other thing I should mention is that the circulation to the feet gets impaired if you have long-standing elevated blood sugars. And when you have poor circulation, uh, wounds are less likely to heal. They're more likely to get infected uh, because the immune system uh, that gets transported via the bloodstream to the wound uh, isn't getting there adequately if you have poor circulation. Uh, furthermore, nutrients that are needed for healing and even oxygen uh, doesn't get to the wound if you have poor circulation. Now, the most common cause of amputations and almost the only cause is attempts to remove calluses. It's interesting that for years the American Diabetes Association recommended that calluses be removed by a trained professional with a scalpel. And then I published in one of their journals the results of my observations over 30 years of serving in the wound care clinic. And 
I interviewed every diabetic patient who attended our clinic and of course every diabetic patient who had had an amp amputation whether it was a toe, a foot, uh, or uh, a lower leg or th the entire leg above the knee. And uh, in every case I asked what led to the amputation. Every, every person said to me, someone tried to remove a callus. It was either the, the most common was a podiatrist. Next most common was the patient or a family member. Uh, there were also um, uh, manicurists uh, who were uh, giving foot treatments. Uh, so, and the modes of removal were varied. It could have been a pumice stone by a podiatrist. It could have been uh, a surgeon uh, using uh, a scalpel. It could have been the, uh, the patient using uh, a little um, battery-operated uh, callus grinder that the ADA advertises in their patient publications. Uh, all of these different modes uh, were the cause of the amputation. Now, there may be rare situations where it's necessary to remove a callus. In the 30 years or so that I spent in the wound care clinic, I encountered one man, one person, it was a man, he was a homeless man who had very thick calluses, about two inches thick, about that thick. And uh, uh, they were uh, pressing on his shoes, how he got his feet into his shoes, I don't know. And I uh, cut them down until they were maybe uh, a quarter of an inch thick. Uh, I was very careful not to cut too close, not to remove them totally, because I didn't want to create a wound. Now, some people may not like calluses because for aesthetic reasons. Uh, a, a, a thin callus uh, has no medical reason for removal. Uh, some surgeons say, well, there could be an ulcer under it. That's speculation, and uh, when you see extremely poor foot care, very tight shoes, maybe there might be an ulcer under the uh, callus, but you can tell by just feeling the skin for heat uh, whether there's an infection going on. You don't have to cut off the callus. Uh, if you do think that there's likelihood of an ulcer, then you have to be extremely careful. Now, uh, there are ways of getting rid of calluses if you don't like the looks of them because you're temperamental on uh, what your feet look like. Uh, and that is to either widen the shoe or to do something to get rid of the pressure on the point where the callus is. Frequently that means putting orthotics into your shoes to take the pressure off the callus and put it on the arch of the foot, move the pressure to the arch of the foot. Um, and this requires customized orthotics to be inserted in your shoes. Frequently, the shoe has to be bigger to fit the orthotic, so you may have to buy a new shoe to fit the orthotic. Um, but uh, the important thing is that calluses are not to be removed. It's asking for trouble. I actually watched uh, in, a surgical, in a surgical clinic when a young lady, about 30 years old, had intrinsic minus feet. These are the deformed feet that diabetics get from high blood sugars. And her metatarsal heads, the, the bumps on the bottom of her feet uh, where the bones end, 
the, the bony heads, uh, were protruding because of her foot deformity. And she had uh, maybe calluses that were uh, a sixteenth of an inch thick, maybe an eighth of an inch thick. And there was a physician's assistant with a scalpel slicing off these calluses till each metatarsal head was bleeding, wrapped the whole foot with gauze, sent her home without any art support or anything to take the pressure off those metatarsal heads. So here she was going to go home with pressure on the metatarsal heads that were now open and bleeding, and the pressure stops the healing. So she's guaranteed to come back with infected wounds in the bottoms of both feet and probably will have both legs amputated. I was at someone else's clinic. I could not butt in, but it was torture to watch what was going on. Now, I published my observations in one of the diabetes journals, and the following year, and I recommended at the end that the ADA remove from their guidelines the requirement that calluses be cut off. And indeed, the next year, the guidelines no longer required that. But now, in 2015, they have new guidelines, they forgot the old article, and they're again uh, requiring that calluses be cut off surgically. So, another important thing that you should remember is that your shoes must fit. Don't wear pointed toe shoes. Wear shoes with a, a, a high toe box so there's room for your toes, especially if you have hammer toes like this, which are part of the deformity that diabetics can get from high blood sugars. So you want a deep toe box, you want a wide toe box, and uh, never pointed toe, toe shoes. And if you get any pink spots, you're going to have to do something to modify your shoes so that there's no pressure because pressure will cause initially pink spots and eventually calluses. Uh, that's about all I can tell you right now. Uh, good luck. Read the text below if you want to visit my monthly free teleconference where we a answer uh, questions uh, every month. Uh, just look below. It'll tell you how to get there. Uh, see you at the next session. Thanks for watching. The bulk of what you've heard on this video uh, appears in my book, Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution, which is available at uh, most internet and local bookstores. It is published by the Hachette Book Group. I'd like to remind you that we have monthly free teleseminars every month at the site askdrbernstein.net. Doctor is spelt D-R, so askdrbernstein.net for a free monthly teleseminar. Uh, sign up a day or two in advance so that you get a reserved seat. Good luck and thanks for listening.